Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'd like to share with you a secret shop that we did for one of our local competitors. So why are we secret shopping the competition? Well, let me set the stage. First off, we do a lot of inspections on new construction houses. There's a special type of inspection we do on these called an 11 month warranty inspection. This is an inspection that's done shortly before the builder's one year warranty expires. It's a chance for the new homeowners to have the builder fix any of the things that weren't installed properly or were kind of messed up when the house was originally built. It's especially important if the new homeowners didn't have a home inspection when they first purchased their new construction house. We do a ton of those and we love doing them because usually we do one inspection and then the builder ends up coming out fixing a ton of stuff and then neighbors talk and we end up going through whole neighborhoods because everybody finds value in these after they've had them done. So we do a lot of those. We've got a local competitor who has been calling us out by name, telling our prospective clients that they do the exact same thing that Structure Tech does, but they're charging about half of what we do. So when they started calling us out by name, I thought, hmm, I, I gotta find out if there's really any truth in this. I mean, if there is, if this other company is offering the exact same thing that we're doing and they're charging half the price that we're charging, well then we need to stop doing them. <laughs> we're, just, we're just gouging people and we don't have our act together if, if we have to charge twice as much as other people for the same product. But I had to know, is this really the same product? So we did a secret shop and here's how we did it. We secret shopped ourselves too. We did an 11 month warranty inspection on a house and we ended up contacting those clients about a week or two later. And th this is, this was, none of this was premeditated. We just reached out to some people we had recently done one from after I got the idea to do this. And I said, hey, are you cool hiring somebody else, another competitor of ours to come out and do the exact same thing that you just hired us to do? I will give you a full refund and you can pay this other company whatever they're charging. It's significantly less than we are. And they said, sure, we'll do that. And they did. And we had a chance to compare the two reports. Now, I'll tell you, for our 11 month warranty inspection, it's almost the exact same thing that we do for any other home. It is a full home inspection. We get up on the roof, we walk through the attic, we get all up in there, we open up electric panels, we use infrared cameras throughout the inspection. I mean, we're looking for a lot of stuff. And that's why our prices are pretty much the same as any other home inspection. But so for this one, we compared our report to their report after it was all said and done. And here's what we found. Our reports were almost the exact same length. Now our report is actually an HTML report and we can convert it to a PDF and then we can compare the number of page numbers. It was almost exactly the same. There was nothing significantly different there. However, their report, 40% of their report consisted of their home inspection standard of practice, the Interdachi standard of practice. It's where they just took the standard of practice, it's this big long PDF, and they put it into their report. So almost half the report could have been sent as a link ahead of time. I think that's the way it should be done. That's the way we do it. When we schedule a home inspection, we send our client our home inspection standard of practice. We send it in a link, or maybe we send it in an attachment. I don't remember. Point is, we send it out ahead of time. It's not part of the home inspection report because it's not part of the home inspection report. But so that's, that was half of our competitor's report. And then as far as the breakdown on what the rest of it consisted of, for our report, we had 19 items that we were bringing up to the builder's attention. 19 things that ought to be addressed by the builder. Now we had some suggestions for upgrades, like we always talk about upgrading ionization alarms to photoelectric smoke alarms. And that's not something for the builder. That, that's not a defect, that wasn't done wrong, but it's, it's something we did list in our report. I'm not including that in the 19 items. The 19 items were things that were just done wrong, ought to be addressed by the builder. Now. One of those things, one of the questionable items in our 19 was cosmetic stuff. And we're talking cracks in the drywall, we're talking nail pops, we're talking scuffs in the walls that could have even 
been caused by the homeowners. I don't know who caused them, but we took a handful of photos, said, hey, you got some cosmetic things here and here. You may want to have the builder address these things too. That was one of our items. Now, the numbers worked out so perfectly here. With our competitor's report, you could almost completely flip-flop those numbers. They had 19 items in their report, and all 19 of those were cosmetic items. Photos of things like nail pops, cracks in the drywall, scuffs in the drywall. Things that I could teach my 11-year-old daughter to document in about an hour, and I could show her how to write a report with this, you know, use a phone, take these pictures, put some generic comments in there. Anybody could do this. Anybody with a pair of eyes could document these cosmetic things and put them into a report. You don't need to hire a professional home inspector to do something like that. But that was the vast majority of this other report. It was almost all cosmetic stuff. There was one other item in the report. This is where it flip-flops. They had, they had 19 cosmetic items and one item that was not cosmetic. They had one item that wasn't cosmetic and it referred to something that was not a defect. They had called out some cracks in the surface that were actually seams. It was one of those things that if you came back to the builder with, the builder would say, what the heck are you talking about? So that's where I say this was flip-flop. They had 19 cosmetic items, one item that was supposed to be brought up to the builder as a defect and really wasn't a defect. Almost the entire report could have been written with anyone who had a pair of eyes and some basic understanding of some home inspection software. No special training, no extra skills. That's what this all consisted of. And that's what they were paying for. So the takeaway here is if you're gonna hire a home inspector to do an 11 month warranty inspection for you, I strongly recommend that you don't go by price alone. Not all home inspectors are created equal. Look at a sample home inspection report that the, the inspector is gonna provide if you're not sure of what you're gonna be getting, this will tell you a lot. And don't, don't glance over it and just look for photos. Any home inspector can put a bunch of colorful photos in their report and make it look like there's a lot of value. Look at what's actually being talked about. If it's all cosmetic stuff, you can do that yourself. Save yourself some money and just take your own pictures. Okay, I think I made my point. Hope I'm not stepping on anybody's toes. I'm not trying to bash any competition or anything like that. My point here is that sometimes, in fact, most of the time, you get what you pay for. Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Thanks for watching. Take care.